Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Hi. Good, Good morning, to see you. Kate. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Um, obviously, we want to talk about uh, the BBC. Mm. Reports this morning that a number of senior staff at the BBC are openly angry at the way the corporation have handled the situation. Are you? Well, I think this is a fast-moving situation by the sounds of it. We seem to have revelation after revelation, including the one last night, that the individual concerned at the centre of this is not satisfied with the complaint that has been made by his mother and his stepfather. And I think under these circumstances, we shouldn't be trying to prejudge exactly what's happening and whether things are being handled in precisely the right way or not, because we don't know enough of the detail. But what I do know is that the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport uh, had a meeting a discussion uh, with the Director General of the BBC to impress upon him the importance of getting to the bottom of this as quickly as possible. And I'm absolutely certain that that's, that will be what's happening. Now, the police are involved as well. At the moment, just by way of an inquiry, not a criminal yeah, investigation. I'm, I'm so I think that, yeah. that's a distinction that's important as well. I'm aware so of that. The I'm, police I'm are in there too and do, doing their... However, let's talk about the timeline, should we? I mean, yeah. um, the family say they approach the BBC in mid-May, either yes. the 18th or the 19th, depending on which uh, report you read. You're a father of three, I think, aren't you? Yes. Um, how would you feel if you contacted the BBC concerned about the safety of one of your children and they appear to have taken no action to prevent one of their employees from allegedly behaving in this fashion? Well, I'm a father of three children and I'd be very concerned for my child if uh, I was in the kind of situation that... Uh, uh, this individual's uh, mother and stepfather appear to be in. But you did use the word appear to be, and I think that's a critical thing, and that's why I don't think we know enough of the facts to be able to cast judgment on they some of these questions at the moment. They know whether don't they? Well, uh, but, but there are many parts to this getting, very... Where, many where's part, the child getting the money from? Well, there are many serious questions to be answered here, but what I'm saying is I don't think any of us, yourself included, Kate, know enough of the facts to be able to start opining as to whether things are happening in exactly the right way or not. What matters is that they're getting on with it. BBC the government has lent into this in the right ago. way. Once it's all over and concluded, I think that is most certainly the time to be looking at whether things were done correctly or not. But at the moment, it seems to me this is a highly fluid, unknown situation, and we should give the BBC but a bit of space. If you approach the BBC and say, my child is mm. a crack addict, please, can you stop one of your employees uh, enabling that by giving them money, you would think that they would be looking into that? As I say, I, I think that, that, that is How would you feel one interpretation of one aspect of what may, or may have happened here. But what I'm saying is this has to be looked at entirely in the round. The police are involved in making inquiries. They don't appear at this moment in time to have decided that a criminal threshold has been exceeded. They may or may not in the due course of time, who knows? But I think the important thing is that we don't know enough of the facts to be able to start pointing too many fingers yet at the process. I think we have to wait till this has played okay. out as quickly and effectively as possible, and that's what the Secretary of State has been pushing for. Should the and then be we named? can start to make those judgments. I'm sorry. Should the presenter be named? Well, I think that's in the same category. So at the moment, that individual has been suspended, and that does seem to me to be the right thing to do. Should given, be named? Given this. But I, I, I don't think I'm in a position to be able to judge that for the reasons that I've given. I think if, if we had all the facts in front of us, I think we could make that call. Let but me put we it don't. this way. And the longer the presenter goes on name, the more damage it causes to the BBC and also to other presenters who are having to, are having their names dragged through the mud. They're having to come out and say, it's not me, it's not me. It's a question, uh, I would suggest, of integrity. Uh, shouldn't the presenter come forward to clear his colleagues' names? Well, as I say, we're going to keep going around the same argument, I but think, not, which is, we? well, these are important things that you're you're suggesting may occur, like somebody coming forward right, and saying, I'm integrity. the suspect, or, or to be revealed as a suspect. And I think those decisions have to be taken on the known facts. And it seems to me that even the apparent known facts seem to be changing within 24 hours. There's quite a but significant development having to come out night. and say, it's not me. It's a matter yeah. of integrity. Well, th that's a matter for the individual concern. But as I say, we don't know the facts of exactly what is happening here. And I think we're not therefore in a position to start saying this should happen, that should happen. You can only do that when you really know the facts. And at the moment, even those apparent facts seem to be changing uh, almost by the hour. So would you implore your colleagues not to uh, name him under parliamentary privilege later in the week, as they are suggesting they will do? I can only speak for myself. It's a very 
personal thing. I would personally certainly not be doing that. Now, members of Parliament do have a right to privilege and uh, to be able to say things to the Commons without fear of legal repercussions, but I think that is a privilege that should be used very sparingly and so with great thought. So I can only speak for myself and say that that is certainly something that I would not choose to do. I would want to see process uh, continue here as quickly as possible, and that is what the Secretary of State for Media and uh, Culture uh, has been doing, has been pressing the BBC to do that. Um, I'm as confident as I can be that they will be now moving at pace. And I think we have to see where all of this lands and then start to make these judgments about whether things were done the right way or not, or whether people should be named or not, and so on and so forth. OK, let me put it this way to you. If the BBC was approached two months ago, which the mother, whose child is a yes. crack addict, says she did, she yes. said that she showed them the bank balances where the money was coming from, £35,000, mm. by this wholesome... Uh, a presenter uh, who um, has a household name and reputation. Mm. Um, she approached them and they did sp the square root of nothing until the son contacted them some time later, two months later, to say, look, yes. and she says she's done that in order to keep her child alive. Yes. They have that questions to answer, most certainly. If that timeline proves to be the case, what should happen? Well... If that is the case, that would be a case, I think, at least of whether the complaint was escalated quickly enough, because it clearly is an extraordinarily serious complaint. It'd be an outrage, but I think, it? but I think the time to make that judgment is when all of this has gone through its various stages, and we know exactly what happened. Now, it may or may not be that it was escalated. I don't know. Um, it may or may not be there were good reasons why it's taken time. Well, it, the family say another it, payment was made by the uh, presenter in question. Well, the individual concerned is now saying that the whole story is rubbish. So things have moved around. As I say, I, I think it's really important that all of us resist, to the extent that we can, the urge to opine on what was right or what was outrageous mm. and wrong until okay. we know all the facts. And the important thing is that this is now pushed forward. I wonder if you're out of touch with what my viewers are thinking this morning. We'll, we'll wait well, and see. You, Let me ask you. tell you how I feel. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely right. And that's why I'm asking you. Perfectly entitled to your opinion and we want it this morning, of course. Uh, does The Sun have questions to answer today as to why they didn't reflect in their reporting uh, last week on what the, uh, the young person at the centre of this controversy had to say via their lawyer? So, so what I've heard, which I guess is what you've heard, is that on Friday of last week, the individual concerns lawyer got in touch with the son to explain that, in his opinion, these uh, accusations were unfounded. Um, I don't, I don't know, you know, whether that's absolutely right. I don't know what the son's reasons might have been for. Uh, if they did indeed get that communication. I don't know whether they did. I don't know whether they've commented even on that at the moment. And therefore, once again, I think we just have to wait until everything has worked its way through. And then I think we can dissect it in the round, take a holistic view Over what of it, time scale? And look at these points. Well, as soon as possible. What does I mean, that mean? I, well, I, I, I can't be drawn into saying you know, by a certain date well, in the future the this whole grass, thing must be... Quite easily. Well, well I, I very much doubt so, g g given that we're spending a lot of time talking about it, the, the press is be, spending... I, I don't... Absolutely, it's a very serious matter, so I have no issue with that. But my point is that I think, given where this, this has landed in terms of the news cycle and the attention that it's getting, it seems inconceivable to me that anybody is going to drag this out any longer than it needs to be. Okay. So I strongly suspect it's being looked at robustly and with vigour now. Well, sincerely hope so. Just a uh, quick thought. Uh, obviously, you want to talk about wage figures yes. uh, this morning. Suggestions that public sector pay is fueling inflation. Doesn't this sort of put pay to that? Well, there's been a slight softening in the rate of increase uh, in wages, but we are still in uh, a difficult inflationary situation. Now, inflation is coming down. Of course, it's high in other countries uh, as well. But we do need to keep bearing down on it. Now, that's a combination of the Bank of England doing its bit on the monetary policy side, but it's also the government doing its bit on the fiscal policy side, which means, amongst other issues, keeping on top of uh, pay settlements. And if those do run away with themselves, I'm afraid that the pain of uh, higher inflation for longer will be there. And, of course, inflation itself is something that impoverishes us all. It's, it's, it's making us all poorer. So we have got to really go for that target the Prime Minister's set of halving inflation by the end of the year. And if we can do that, there'll be pressure off not just cost of living issues, but also mortgage rates, for example, 
uh, which is another important issue at the moment. Uh, I must let you go. We could talk uh, all day. Thank you. Yeah. I, I know you have to tiptoe through the raindrops on that story, but it's really important and our viewers yes. very, very interested. So I totally thank you for understand. Time. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you, you. Kay.